Hello and welcome to the V-Ray for SketchUp series. In this episode, I'll show you how to populate our scene with the help of the Chaos Cosmos browser. In the previous episode, we did a brief overview of the upcoming tutorials. If you're interested in what is coming up, check out the introduction video. Let's start off by setting our render settings for test renders. The first thing we're going to do is open the asset editor and in the settings menu, we'll add a denoiser. This element will speed up our render times significantly. For testing purposes, we will use the Intel Open Image Denoiser, which has a much faster initial feedback. Above it, you can see the update rate of the denoising effect. Set it to Rapid, which will update the denoised version of our image very frequently. Let's start an interactive render to see how V-Ray is going to visualize our image. Click on this button. When we start an interactive render, we can see the V-Ray frame buffer pops up and previews our image. Notice how fast the denoiser we added is clearing our image. We can hide or unhide the denoising effect from here. Right now we only have the default sun in our scene, which is lighting up our house. For now this lighting will be enough. Later on we will have a dedicated episode for exploring the sun and sky parameters. As you have probably noticed, our house is floating in the air, something most houses don't do. An easy way we can change that is by adding an infinite plane to act as our ground. You can do that from here, and then position it wherever we like. This is a quick and easy way to create a starting point for our environment. From here on, you can start expanding. I have previously made an exterior environment, consisting of a few patches of grass and a wall around the premise. For now, this will be enough to start placing our exterior assets. Let's open the Chaos Cosmos browser. On the home page, you can see all the different sections we can search for. Let's start with the vegetation. In each section, there's a bunch of subcategories you can choose from. In this case, we want to add some trees in our scene. If you want a specific type of tree, you can search it from here. When we click on the model we want to use, there is additional information about it. For example, the Scott's Pine Tree, created by Max Tree, has specific tags you can search for in the search bar. For even more specific searches, you can use the filters. Here you can select multiple tags as well as color palettes. Let's pick a tree and download it. When the asset is ready to be used, you will see the blue check mark on the corner. You can see all the models you have downloaded here. Now if we click on this icon, the browser will automatically close and you will have the option to position your asset anywhere in the scene. Note that objects imported from the Cosmos browser will be placed exactly on top of the surface you're placing them on. This means that objects can also be stacked, which I will show you later on. To speed up the process of this tutorial, I have added the trees and the rest of the exterior assets. As you can see, after adding the exterior assets, we start to get a sense of the location of our house. We use the Scott's Pine model as our primary tree type, which is located in high altitude places above the Arctic Circle, in places like Scandinavia. This is important because you can research different types of vegetation in that region. The trees in our scene fit the type of house we chose, but they are not enough to look like a forest. If we start copying and pasting our trees in the background, it will not only take a lot of time, but it will also make our scene harder to work with. This means if we add a lot of trees, we can expect our render times to be higher and navigation to slow down. To prevent that, I have the perfect solution. We will add these background trees. This is a backplate shape model with a tree texture on it. I have positioned each set of backgrounds with a bit of an offset in the distance to create depth. Before we finish the video, I will give you a little tip for the Cosmos assets. If you want to delete an asset you have downloaded from the Cosmos browser, you can do so by navigating to here. You can track missing Cosmos assets by opening the Asset Editor. Under the Geometry tab, we can see all the different exterior assets we have used. On the very right side of the tree geometry, we can see a download icon. If we click it, the missing assets will be downloaded. Let's render the image to see how our scene looks. Sadly, our tree is missing, 
good thing we can download it from here. This option can be very useful if you receive a file with missing Cosmos assets. You can just go to the Geometry tab and download them from there. This eliminates the need to sync assets or search for them manually in the Cosmos browser. This was the first part of building up our scene. I hope you learned something useful and helpful that you can try in your own work. Join me in the next episode where we'll continue building our scene. Thank you for being part of the V-Ray experience.